So this is James's deck dinner for today. It's the okay. yellow roasted potatoes, nasturtiums, uh, lettuce, Eat the both flowers. from my garden, cucumbers, and turbot steaks. And I don't know what that is, but that does steak? have, it's a lettuce I grew. Uh -oh. Oh. And turbot steaks. Uh, it had some bone in it, but I tried to get that out of there. And mm. cake, orange, navel orange, yeah. cherries from my tree, and a truffle. Cherries. And I'm going to talk Except about tomatoes. Black Fly. And this one is inspired by true events and a oh, wow. Is that Siberia, MLKFBI, and what's the last one called? I think it's like Elise. Elise? Elise. Elise. Yeah. It's terrible. I, right? I don't know if I've ever seen a worse movie. And today, yeah, you'll notice true. that there's a, we have a special guest. And that's my friend Ian. Where? Right here. Oh. Yeah. So. He used to work with Ian. <laughs> yeah. And. Hey, uh, James, Ian. eat. Eat. Yep. Yeah. I've got to sit down first. I yes. walked 27 kilometers uh, yesterday. Oh, really? About 620 meters rise. Oh. So. Yeah, I think I, I feel, feel a little, a little, little, bit, uh, little sore after yeah. that. Sore. I just fatigued. So, and uh, a little stiff. But not really sore. Oh, so I don't know what turbot even it looks like. It's some sort of fish. Because right? it smells like fish. Yeah. But um, I don't know what it it's some big fish because honestly I took out Never something that looked like a spine with vertebrae, you know, whatever. Okay. So and it was like as big as a human's. Honestly. I think I saw it move. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Oh, yeah. But anyway, so, so uh, there were, uh, this huh? isn't boneless. Well, I tried to take no, the bones out. Just, oh, yeah, it didn't come boneless. Okay, that's it. Which I don't I know why people would buy. Bones in there, so I'm going to fish uh, save uh, dissecting it for off camera. Oh, okay. And stuff like that. So, anyway, um, you'll see there's a lovely bouquet of flowers beside me, and Ian brought that for me because this morning, I got up. I got up a bit late because, well, we were hiking last night. We didn't get back until late, and, um, and there was this little calf that w had escaped from the. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. Wow. There was a calf that had escaped from the. Uh, what's that called? The Nature Conservancy field on the way to Waterton, mm. and um, so. This calf, he was right along the highway, yeah. and you could see in his eyes, he was thinking, oh, I wonder if the grass is greener on the other side, right? Well, he was on a uh, turn off, you know, turn out, mm -hmm. and he wasn't eating grass. No, he was just standing point, by the so. highway, so anyway, and, so uh, we stopped and we were going to try to get him back in, but there was, we couldn't figure out how to do it, because well, honestly, we yeah. thought, we saw the gate there. And we thought, okay, it would take both of us to open this gate to try to get it back yeah. in. But there's all the cows on the other side, oh, and we don't out. want them to come out. And what if we didn't get the gate closed properly? We yeah, have known. We right? Have that would have been terrible. Off. And so then, I mean, here we are. We're not responsible for this little cow, this calf escaping. Bullcat. But if we tried to get it back in, we'd be responsible <laughs> for all of those cows that might get out. So yeah, we true. didn't. We didn't do it. So. Get James got the number in. and stuff, and somebody yeah. else who's supposed to take care of them will hopefully take care of him. Yeah. Geez. But anyway, so Ian came by this morning. I went out. I got up a bit late because I was really beat. I'm still really beat. So I I got up and I went out to. I the first thing I love to do when I wake up is go look at my flowers in the peat bale row and all my the fruit that's ripening and whatever i love it right because it's i've worked so hard to grow this stuff for so yeah. long and then it's yeah. a nice reward first thing in the morning it really brightens my yeah, spirits sure not today so today <laughs> it didn't brighten my spirits because i saw the flowers that i'd admired yesterday somebody had come and clipped them off the scissor marks so they'd cut them yeah. and i was frosted i was really mad like i was swearing and my neighbor came out and uh, she was talking to me and, and um, then after the, we talked probably an hour and after talking to her, I felt better because, you know, she reminded me of street wheelers and stuff like that. And I thought, and that's a car event that 
people drive cars around in circles for I don't know why, but people love it. Not me. But anyway, so it's, it's a parade. Yeah, it's like a car parade that they do all day on one day of the year. So, um, yeah, anyway, yeah, so party, yeah, yeah. So I was reminded of street wheelers, and I thought, oh, everybody likes to come down this alley to go sit in third, right? Yeah. And so there would have been a thousand people who would have walked by my flowers, and, have to be and they didn't. They didn't take them, right? So there's yeah. a thousand good people. And there was one person who had to, it would have been a neighbor because they came out with their scissors, right? Who's packs along yeah, scissors with yeah, them. Yeah, so yeah. Um, somebody, it was one person, only one person who was a turkey who decided <laughs> to come out and clip my flowers. So anyway, Ian walks by while I'm talking to Marlene. And so I tell him about how they clip my flowers. And so he goes out, I'm getting dinner ready for James in the kitchen. And, and, uh, I see Ian walking by through the kitchen window and I'm, I see him packing this flower bouquet and I'm like, oh, yeah. So he tried to cheer me up by bringing me flowers. So I invited him to be a part of our deck dinner today and they're lovely flowers. So thank you, Ian, for bringing those. And it did cheer me up. But I'd already felt better talking to Marlene, honestly. Because once I was reminded of street wheelers. Yeah. No, he hasn't. He, he's, I think he'll try it later. Try what? The fish. There are bones in it? Yeah, yeah I got to I'll have to get that. glasses. I got cataract surgery. Yeah. So I got 2020 for driving, but I got the cheap one yeah. because I'm poor. Yeah. Well, I'm poor. And uh, so I need reading glasses. Uh, we're poor, so I buy the, the glasses I've got are worth 125. Yeah, the dollar That's store a glasses. Buck 25. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we're poor, and um, so I'll, I'd have to go and get them, and then I'd be picking through all the stuff by hand, and uh, I think people uh, at home on the internet there, um, you know, they're not paying money, but they're paying time, basically, uh, to watch us, to watch so that's it. not, that wouldn't be an aesthetic experience. No. Anyway. I twigged on the possibility it was uh, street nurse folk. It's but not. You're right. They had scissors. Because they had, unless yeah. they had something like a Swiss Army knife with them or something like that. And it came like a so. poor, former boy scout, always prepared. And it's one it's, thing uh, if somebody has local. like their sweet peas that they took. And they were my first sweet peas. They were the only blooms I had for the sweet peas so far. And it's one thing if somebody sees flowers and it's a big wall at the end of the season of flowers and you know, okay, well, these flowers are are toast in a week or whatever. Maybe I should ask and see if the person would give me a bouquet of flowers. One, ask. Two, you don't take when there's not much there. Yeah, and you certainly right. don't take all of them. Yeah, That's right. rude. That's not anyway, so I'm going to talk about it's black It's kind of like the neighborhood, though. With it the is. exceptions, it's I know. I, it's just like another. The woman that you're talking to, but yeah. 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 It's just another thing that's trying to push me out. You know, it's like, like I was telling my neighbor. Well, why, why would I grow anything if people are just going to take it? Yeah. You know, that's right. like I work hard growing this stuff. Why would I if, yeah. if it disappears on me? We're going to so be refugees from this neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. We're going to have to. It's a terrible, <laughs> terrible place. Well, that's the thing. You know, you live in the city, and. You're, you're in a mixed tribe. Like they're, you're just refugees from from a tribe, and uh, other people are from different tribes, and then you got you're deal, not necessarily yeah. compatible. Yeah, you know, and you just try to stuff. you try to get by on what you have, and then you're confronted with the fact that people you're really not compatible with a lot of other people <laughs> so. I, I wouldn't put it that way uh, okay. really um, because people are going to misinterpret that really you know yeah um, this is a problem with a so-called multicultural society a real multicultural society I believe in a maxicultural society where there should be eight billion cultures in the world that's one for every person but uh, mm -hmm. In a democracy, there is tolerance for other people, and uh, people obey the law. Okay. Enough people obey the law. 
But when you got the folks who don't believe in tolerance, who right. don't believe in your right to uh, practice whatever, they're in your face about you're this, right. that, and I the other thing. You're right. I see what you're saying. People wouldn't have misinterpreted what I had to say. Exactly and right. And I don't want... It's, it's not as though, you know, like, you've got problems and other people have got problems. No, other people are dumping their problems on you. They're dumping yeah. their problems on and, you. And, like I said, there were probably a thousand good people who walked by and just liked the flowers yesterday and just looked at them. And that's, you know, when somebody grows a flower garden, it's for everyone to admire as long as it's growing. And once you cut it, it's, it's not, you know. Yeah. If you want a bouquet of flowers, go to a flower shop and get a bouquet of flowers. Those are grown in commercially, not in somebody's yard. They, you know, nobody went to somebody's flower garden and harvested these flowers and sold them at the flower shop. To we go to the rose garden and take the flowers out. <laughs> so anyway. Now in this case, what? I think it was uh, someone who uh, has gone after Pauline's uh, cherry, cherry, well, without Pauline's permission. And uh, There's that person is, is retired. It's not as though they're poor or anything like that. Now, we do have a problem at my place, at yeah. your place, of um, homeless people making themselves at home where they shouldn't be. Well, and yeah. Marlene brought that up this morning, yeah. but I told her, well, this wasn't homeless people that did Homeless it. people you know, don't they don't uh, have, uh, they, aren't carrying around scissors. No. They're probably yeah, they're not carrying around a Swiss army knife. Now, a lot of them would be carrying around knives. But, yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. But this wasn't homeless people. I, so homeless anyway. would pull it out and just drop it on the ground. So. Exactly. <laughs> Some would. <laughs> yeah, they just rip them out and walk on. Yeah. And Most, that's not good uh, either. Most wouldn't even but have anyway. enough energy to do that. No. Yeah, I know. You just make them run. Now, on yeah. to the DVD reviews. Black Fly. Inspired by true events. Wow. This is... The craziest story. I. It really makes uh, a person think, wow, my family's so great when you watch this. Some people don't have great families. Some people have horrible families. And it's, it's amazing. This, um, you know, if people aren't treated well when they're children and then they end up growing up and, and the problem just spreads, right? So, um, Wow. That's between this... brother and him. Hmm? Two brothers and him. Yeah, it is. You you were reading the back. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, But, I mean, neither of the brothers is treated well. The one brother, he runs away yeah. back home to his other brother. And his other brother seems really nice and loving at first. And then you realize he's... Safe. He's Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so... Um, Anyway, I don't want to give the story away. It's definitely worth watching. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, this is the best of a lot of stacks. And this was a Canada-made film, it looks like, from, from the back of things here. So, I don't know, uh, but it's not, it's not uh, about a Canadian family, as far as I can tell. It's about, there's, it's set in the United States, so... But I don't know. They don't. They don't tell at the end. Oh, this is you know whatever. But it does say inspired by true events, and yeah. that's wild. It's just incredible. Siberia. I like watching Keanu Reeves, even though he's really not an actor. You know, but yeah, um, these action shows. I've seen all. Yeah. Of them. This one. And this one, it's interesting. He's in Russia, and there's a lot of romance. And and, uh, Just what you think of Russian when you're mafia, about sort Siberia, of romance, um, <laughs> diamond sales, yeah. and whatever. But the I liked it all the way along until the end, when um, the woman's <laughs> brother says to Keanu Reeves' character, he says, "You and and like my sister, we just need to get you on a plane and get you out." And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, duh." And, but no Keanu Reeves character, he's going for a big shoot 'em up And it doesn't even make sense. I mean, it's not gonna help anything. So it's honestly, 
I don't know what they were thinking. I guess they were like, oh, we need a big shoot 'em up scene at the end. It didn't make sense. It was stupid. Uh, his shows are all shoot 'em up. So, yeah. so yeah. this one, I thought, you know, I actually like Anthony Hopkins okay. This was bottom of the sack. This yeah. was so bad. They have the main character here. I don't believe she's an actress at all. I, but I don't know who she's related to or what, why they decided to give her a role in a movie, let alone a leading role. She's awful. Luckily, the last <laughs> part, like the they're, the first part of the movie, she's having to do um, read lines and stuff like that. She's having to actually try to act and that doesn't work. Um, but eventually she has a non-speaking role, which that was all right. So when she was sort of catatonic in the in the hospital, yeah, that was she was suitable for that role. But wow, this was unbelievably bad. It was unwatchable. The first part of the movie was in black and white, and they'd have little shots of color, like um, a bouquet of roses would be red. And I was like, okay, what is the point of this? You know, they're trying to be artistic with the black and white and the use of just very very minimal use of color. But it didn't. There was no purpose. So. This was garbage. Absolute garbage. Oh, he's Just dead now, Anthony Hopkins. Wow. Maybe he died from embarrassment of having to, having that, been in that movie. Yeah. So James is going to talk about MLK FBI for the rest of the thing. Maybe we'll, well have a few things to add. I don't know. I, I, I've got to hear it or, or whatever because I, I didn't catch all of it. I okay. think I snoozed. We'll just so, uh, talk a little bit about what you did here. Yeah. It's been a uh, kind of a trope. How, how's that? A uh, little return for the nifty shifty hefty lefties. They use that word misusing. So I'm kind of misusing it too. It's a literary critical term. It's been a trope that J. Edgar Hoover was just an awful guy. Yeah. And um, so on and so forth. And the you know, like, uh, I got interested in J. Edgar Hoover um, around the time when I started working at the cop shop here. And, of course, he was a top cop in the United States, etc. When I started working at the uh, cop shop here in Lethbridge. And I was mentioning the other day, uh, I turned up for my first day of work. What would you do, you? You're doing janitor? You turn up at uh, 3 o'clock, your shift starts at 3 o'clock. I didn't believe in turning up uh, 15 minutes early or whatever. Yeah. Because they weren't paying me for that. Uh, but uh, I knew that uh, the cop shop had had, they'd contracted out the year before the city parachuted me in there. And uh, that hadn't worked out, probably for any variety of reasons. One of them had to do with. Um, can you imagine like having trouble with the uh, janitors that you're bringing in and you're having trouble bonding them because they have a criminal record? Oh. Oh. So I went through uh, two criminal uh, criminal uh, checks, background checks, and I want you folks who are not out there who uh, don't like my politics and stuff like that. I came up clean, so I'm not like a uh, crimes against humanity uh, against humanity type of guy or anything like that. Get that straight. But at any rate, um, uh, the year before they contracted out, they'd had three janitors in. Place. Mm -hmm. When I they parachuted me in, it was down to two. So uh, I knew I had to turn up there on time, and uh, I, I figured I'd have to give them free overtime, and yes, the city or the cop shop or both owe oh, me thousands and thousands of dollars from the uh, two years I worked there uh, before the free overtime I gave them. But uh, I turned up at 3 o'clock. What you do, Ian? They're not going to let you in? Well, they have to. Right? Oh, you're talking about the, the JFK movie? This is not. This is the I Martin know, no, Luther King movie. I'm, uh, I'm talking about J. Edgar Hoover. Oh, okay. So uh, they're not going to let me in. And uh, I didn't used to carry around ID. You probably carry around ID all the time, right? No. Nope. Okay, there you go. 
So what do you do in that situation? Because the, the yeah. cops there, I went to the track. I didn't know anything about it. I probably should have gone through the front door to the, uh, just check with a desk sergeant. But uh, it wouldn't have made any difference. It would have been the same issue there. Who are you? Yeah. You do not get into a cop shop unless you have a 